हाय यूट्यूब हाय व्यूअर्स कैसे हो आप सब लोग गुड मॉर्निंग आप सबको uh, आपका स्वागत है एपिसोड थ्री में uh, इस एपिसोड में मैं पशुपतिनाथ मंदिर जा रहा हूँ अभी सुबह के सात आठ बज रहे सुबह के आठ बज रहे और uh, यहाँ पे मैं ललितपुर में ही हूँ और अपने वही यूनिक टी शॉप पे बैठा हूँ आज सुबह वापस चाय पीने के लिए पिछले एपिसोड का थोड़ा सा रिकैप कर लेते पिछले एपिसोड में आपने देखा होगा कि मैं कैसे भक्तपुर गया ललितपुर से और फिर भक्तपुर में मैंने ओम दाई से बात की और सारे भक्तपुर के बारे में समझा और आप लोगों को भी वीडियो बना के बता दिया है और इस एपिसोड में पशुपतिनाथ मंदिर जा रहा हूँ मैं वहाँ पर मैं मिलूँगा गणेश भाई से और गणेश भाई मुझे कुछ वहाँ के बारे में बताएंगे पशुपतिनाथ मंदिर के बारे में बताएंगे मैं कुछ अभी पशुपतिनाथ के बारे में बताना नहीं चाहता जो मुझे आधा अधूरा पता है लेकिन हो सकता है गणेश भाई के साथ जब ठीक से बात करेंगे वो जब एक्सप्लेन करेंगे तो हमें और ज़्यादा समझ में आएगा और मुझे भी और ज़्यादा समझ में आएगा सो बने रहिए थैंक यू तो मैं पहुँच गया हूँ पशुपतिनाथ मंदिर में और बस एक बात पूछनी थी आप सब लोगों से एक सवाल पूछना था कि ऐसी कौन सी चीज़ है जो जितना फैलेगी हम सब लोगों में वो अच्छी होगी मैं कह रहा हूँ स्माइल स्माइल एक ऐसी चीज़ है जो जितना सब लोगों में फैलेगी उतनी अच्छी है तो उसी प्यारी बात के साथ अभी मैं मौजूद हूँ यहाँ पे गणेश के साथ गणेश amazing video okay just keep watching hi uh, so pandit i personally welcome you to pashupatinath temple it's it's even better that you started your tour early in the morning through pashupatinath temple that's how we do it you know like going to the temple early in the morning getting blessings hoping they all day it's going to be a beautiful day so welcome and welcome to all the viewers pashupatinath temple the shivas temple um yeah so we're going to slowly explain about uh, talk, you know make a tour uh, explain about what's going on here what is the history what is the significance of this place and all and um uh, because of the covid the main temple is closed at the moment that is why uh, we cannot go inside the core temple area but we can have a good view of the temple from the terrace we have a, uh, you know like a place from where we can have a panoramic view of the whole temple area and just from there we can have a beautiful view of pashupatinath temple so when we say pashupatinath pashupatinath is the protector of entire living creature uh, pashu of course it means animal but when we say animal it's not just animal animal but uh, entire living beings you see and pati means lord or protector so and it is believed that whoever gets cremated uh, on the lap of pashupati nas on the bank of bagmati river in the next life they don't have to be reincarnated as an animal so almost uh, 90% of people who uh, dies in government valley is brought to pashupati nas temple area for the funeral rites so as an ambulance they just brought uh, a corpse yeah. and in hinduism we believe that even though we are strangers we are not connected to the family of the deceased our presence play vital role uh, in the next life of the spirit yeah? so we need to join your hands you know like greet and pray for the you know like better reincarnation all right and so this temple here right in front of us is the temple of parvati uh, see is patsali sorry one of the forms of parvati architecture uh, is pagoda style it has multiple layers of roof but the statue inside the temple is uh, it's uh, you know sri yantra you know and it is believed that the statue inside was first established in 6th century so you are you know making a tour in a place which was uh, already there at the times the country like united states australia was not you know a part of the planet yeah. so 
it's very old at the same time it's religious very uh, you know like a must visited place i would say and as the temple is closed at the moment there are queue of hindu visitors from different part of nepal and india when somebody comes to pashupati nath temple before visiting the main temple they have to first worship to parvati you know there are three main gods brahma vishnu and shiva brahma is the creator Vishnu is the protector and Shiva is the destroyer. Likewise, three, these three main gods have their uh, female counterpart. Um, for Brahma, it's Saraswati. For uh, Vishnu, it's Lakshmi. And for Shiva, of course, it's Parvati. And Lakshmi would be the goddess of wealth and prosperity. Saraswati is the goddess of education, knowledge, art and music and Parvati is the goddesses of goddesses. She is the one who controls the whole nature and Vatsalisuri to whom this temple is dedicated uh, is one of the manifestations of Parvati and she is known to be very fierce, scary, you know, black in color and then it is believed that when the eagles arrive in the universe she comes to destroy so she is pretty destructive in nature. Yeah? Um, this is how she looks like when she is personified. She has got multiple arms. And then you can see different mythical uh, uh, creatures. Uh, by default, in any Hindu temples on the door, there will be the carving of Garuda, which is half bird and half man, the vehicle of Lord Vishnu. And all of this uh, beautiful wooden work is handcrafted. An interesting thing about the features of Hindu temples in Nepal as well as in India is uh, sometimes we can see the erotic carvings on the struts like uh, over there. So the reason behind Kama Sutra in the Hindu temple is to let the people know that uh, sex is a very sacred activity, you know, if there is uh, uh, you know, mutual uh, agreement between the opposite sex. Uh, to have sex is very important for the upliftment of the soul. So normally, when we think, especially in the culture of in, in society in Nepal as well as in India, we're not really open about sex. But we've got the sex position all carved in the Hindu temple. So it is to let the people that you know, it's not dirty, it's not filthy. You know, it's just a way to express the love. You know, so when somebody come to temple and see the sexual uh, carvings, then they will understand that it's something God wanted us to do. You know. So this is one of the reasons why we've got Kama Sutra in the Hindu temple. The other reason is in the, uh, the ancient time, uh, you know, uh, still it exists in some of the villages in Nepal, uh, the child marries, you know, like the parents would fix up uh, the marriage of uh, the little kids. And when they're grown up, they would not really know about how to make love in bed. So if they go to temple and say this stuff, they would actually know uh, how to, you know, like have intercourse, physical intercourse. Now the reason why we've got Kama Sutra in the Hindu temple. And uh, in Tantric uh, system, it is believed that when Kali gets angry, she comes to destroy the temple in the form of uh, lightning or thunderbolt. And when she comes to destroy temple, there could be the chances that, uh, you know, the artistic temple uh, could be destroyed as well. So if a temple has got Kama Sutra on it, Kali will uh, actually get distracted from her destructive nature. You know, she would see Kama Sutra and then maybe she gets some kind of feeling of, you know, having sex. Before she was angry, she wanted to destroy. Now she's in sex position, you know. It's a different emotion now, so no more destruction. One reason why we've got the Kama Sutra in the temple. That's, 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 uh, uh, that's really uh, very logical. Yeah, yeah, it is. And also, uh, you know, uh, at the time, at some point of time, uh, Buddhism was really uh, flourishing all over India, Nepal and some South Asian countries and one of the uh, you know principle of uh, a, a buddhist religion is you know not to get connected in family life so uh, you know there are so many people who are influenced by the buddhist philosophy of living uh, you know a celebrated life you know sexless life so uh, but you know without sex there would not be the continuation of the generation so to let the people know about it is very important it is very uh, you know like very very vital to you know like get life to continue the generation Hindus have Kama Sutra in the temples all right all right, all right. Yeah, we need to respect uh, this thing you know it really hold great significance at that time back in those days all right all right all right yeah everything uh, that's uh, that's practiced around the world or uh, 
or considered to be good or bad it's all depends on the on how you thought about it mm-hmm. okay and where did you kept your thought like on a positive side so it works for you right right, right. and it works for everyone exactly. all right all right So the things that we need to be careful about when we go to Hindu temple is to uh, bring the offerings uh, uh, you know in the, according to the god and goddesses that we are about to worship uh, for example if we are going to Lord Ganesh's temple uh, Hindus commonly know about what to offer but for, not, for those who are non Hindus but are interested in in this religion uh, we worship god and goddesses according to their nature uh, so for kali she is known as uh, a, a you know, little bit fierce you know uh, angry goddess so uh, only offering flowers and all would not please her so there is a tradition um, uh, where we sacrifice animals in front of kali temple and this still exists uh, right in front of the temple uh we give animal sacrifices we uh chop the head we offer the blood into the statue inside uh rest of the animals for the part will be taken back you know they uh, cook it serve it to friends and family as something sacred so it is believed that offering blood will calm her energy down and she will not uh, bring any such uh you know like destructions but uh you see this uh, the sacrifice of animals uh, is not just only in Hindu religion or not only in Nepal or India it's something which has been prevailed in the in the world since uh, since prehistoric area you know at the time when uh, people were uh, you know involved in you know like hunting uh, society that's what they used to do you know they, uh, they they would go to jungle they would hunt the animals you know like and they would uh, feed their stomach you know and that's how the animal sacrifice tradition got started all over the world and and in this place it it might sound a little bit uh, you know like intense it's strong you know to, uh, to tell you that in botsali botsali temple right in front uh, there is a tell that they used to even sacrifice humans so it is commonly known as human sacrifice temple it's you know i, I i'm sorry to tell you this but you know of course you know when somebody comes to religious space historical side you know has to know about what used to happen back in the days they used to please the um, you know nature they, they wanted especially the agricultural based society they wanted to have control over the nature they they wanted you know rainfall happen on the time so that they could have better crops you know so they used to think that if you know if they give a sacrifice you know of, of a being of a living being then god would actually have control over the nature and accordingly they will get uh, you know the rain a uh, proper sunlight you know uh, the favorable environment to grow their crops okay, it's not only in here okay, but okay, okay. Uh, in, in central america in abrahamic culture you know all over the world there has been the tradition of animal sacrifice long long time before yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and uh, and in, in in the first episode uh, when i was in the patan uh, i had the same uh, same discussions okay where uh, in patandarbar there is a uh, a palace for uh, for sacrifice mm-hmm. okay and uh, there is a uh, uh, kali inside it right yeah yes. and uh, there are types of animals which are only allowed to be sacrificed correct yeah. yes and it and uh, uh, and about the human itself the sacrifice of human i i got it here okay but but this is like that is a darbar and this is like more close to the god mm-hmm. because there's there's a god is inside this place okay mm-hmm. so maybe the sacrificing level is a little bit more here mm-hmm. yeah uh, well uh, you are very right when we sacrifice animals uh, there are only five kinds of animals that we sacrifice we call it panchabali pancha itself is Uh, number 5 uh, bali is uh, sacrifice uh, according to uh, hindu text and these five animals uh, has has to be a grown up one not a you know like a baby animal and it should be male animals you know? and so first it's a uh, cock then it's duck not duck but duck um sheep goat and buffaloes and uh, these five animals possess some kind of negative energies so when we are sacrificing these animals we are not just only doing it uh, you know for the gods or you know just because somebody wanted to have meat 
it's because to uh, you know take away the uh, you know like the energy negative energy which could be possibly within us yeah so sure. chicken uh, um, um, you know people say hey don't be chicken sit you know it means you know don't be uh, coward you know so uh, it, uh, somehow it, it they they related in the way that chicken cock and whatever it represents uh, cowardness and sheep uh, it represents stupidity you know if there is like um, too many sheep all the sheep follow the one in the front line even if the one is going up the mountain ready to die the other uh, follow the one in the front line so you know stupidity so it represents stupidity likewise buffalo represents rage and anger um, similarly uh, duck Dark, dark represents passiveness, slow and passiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's left? Do we cover all those five? Yeah, we covered four. Uh, then we have uh, maybe goat. Okay, goat, yes, yeah. Goat. So uh, when I say goat, it's he goat, the male goat. So male goat is known for having, you know, too much of sexual desire. And if you go to the goat farm, you'll notice that the male goat is always jumping on the female goat. You know, so right. I don't want to be a sex man yet. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Right. This five animal represents five negative energies. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's the same thing that I uh, that I found out to be explained in Patanjali. Uh, exactly the same. It's the same thing. You know, yeah. uh, many of our culture, tradition, the way we sing, the way we live our life is highly decided by the religion. In in, in Nepal, especially, eighty one percent of people here follow Hinduism as their major religion. So it has a very profound impact on our daily life, culture, and tradition. All right. All right. and also uh, it is uh, like uh, known that that the ones who are uh, vegetarians uh, tend to uh, like take a pumpkin or a coconut and consider it uh, to be sacrificed right right, right. right. they find some alternative of uh, animal sacrifice and in here uh, like we uh, crack the water coconut and it has to make sure that while we uh, crack it it has to be done the very first attempt so when we are cracking the coconut uh, we are also cracking um, uh, you know all the uh, possible evil spirits troubles or problems upcoming in our life all right so okay. it's it's been sculpted in 6th century lion is the transportation means of kali every hindu god and goddesses they take animal as the means of vehicles so we'll see di- different kind of animal statues around the temple those represents the transportation means of that respective gods um you can see the bull in the middle because the bull is for lord shiva and the temple is dedicated to batsali surya which is one of the farms of parvati wife of lord shiva and this is ananta narayan and uh, it is made by the group of women in just 55 hours uh you know collecting 121 pieces of stones found in this holy pushpinath area and so it was uh, you know not easy to do it in just 55 hours so there was small flaws that the woman created if you see uh, the finger on the left left hand side the upper left finger you can if you count it there are only four fingers So this is one of the mistakes the woman while doing it uh, in brass um, you know like did it. And on the chest of the statue you can see a small opening that is where people insert coins and there is a local belief whoever insert the coin in the statue pushing with the finger on the very first attempt they get the blessings of financial prosperity. Yeah so if you want to be rich if you want if you never want to be broke insert the coin make sure you do it in the in, first push in in your first attempt yes in the cremation uh people burn all the jewelry ornaments of the dishes along you know uh, we do not take all those uh jewelry separated from the body because that would create a sort of uh, uh attachment to the spirit who have passed away so uh, you know it, it really is hard to b- burn those uh ornaments and it eventually goes to the river so sometime we see the locals uh going down to the river you know fishing the coins and such jewelry like the one we can witness at the moment it's, it's better not to grieve not to cry scream at the hindu funeral because that would uh, attract the soul to us the person who is crying um the soul is gone you know it's not going to come back the person is dead anyway so even 
we break our head or whatever we do you know it's not going to come back and spiritual wise it's not good uh, to cry at the funeral because that would attract attacks of the soul towards the person who is crying so the first ritual that is to be performed as soon as the death is declared is to tie the feet tie the toes uh, of the corpse uh, you know there's still some energy left in the dead body and uh, that could be a little bit of chance of revival you know so uh, they try to uh, preserve that energy in the body tying the toes because when uh, the toes uh, is tied uh the hole the perineum hole that we have here you know it gets blocked so the the little bit of life which is in the body even though it's not functional it is still there cannot be released out so it is very important that we tie the feet and the next thing to be done is to uh give water offering and that will also help the, the energy left inside the body to be preserved uh and then the body has to be covered with uh the white seat it has to be plain white fabric uh you know white reflects the heat and uh, sunlight so uh, you know the heat and sunlight uh, tend to deteriorate the active cell in the human body i told you you know a person dies but it is not actually death you know it happens in process so even when somebody says it is death uh, according to uh, you know yogic culture according to uh, vedic sanatan dharma uh, there is still a life in it so when when somebody covers the dead body with the white uh, seat white uh, fabric it is to reflect the heat and temperature so that the life which is still inside the human body gets preserved and there could be a little bit chance of revival all right that is why hindus uh, uh, put the white body to the dead body of course white is the color of purity you know that's another reason but uh, spiritual wise this is why we cover the dead body with white fabric and that's what they do down there you can see a uh, lot of people surrounding the dead body there's another corpse laid on the floor all right so uh, one more thing uh, what about some i i i saw that some put a coin on the forehead mm-hmm. any idea about it well you know practically it is believed that uh, the soul while traveling to the next life needs some money to leave you know that is to make sure that the, uh, the person in the next life won't have some uh, financial insecurities okay okay all right all right, all right and also the right, coins right. that we have uh, you know it's uh, uh, well in the very very old industries they used to have leather coins wooden coins and all but the coins that we have to keep on the forehead has to be metallic you know it has all to right. be made from copper or the alloy of some uh, you know metals which have some specific energy on it so that okay. would also actually help the you know mm. the energy to be connected and therefore you mm. know help the spirit revive mm. all right down there on the side of the river there is a uh, a slide a slab uh, before the dead body is cremated uh, first the family bring the body and keep it over that stone and just on top of that stone you can notice there is shiva linga the statue of lord shiva Uh, you can see the topmost part of the statue pointed towards the sky and there is a hall where all the liquid offering that is offered to the main temple the golden temple gets collected hundreds of liters of cow milk is soured uh, to the main statue of pashupati nas so whatever liquid offering is given to the main temple it gets collected to that uh, you know in in that hall you can see the white liquid coming out of the stairs this has actually come from the main temple so it's something very very sacred so to ease the dust uh, hindus before they bring they burn the dead body they cremate the dead body they offer that holy river watering into the mouth of the dead body and and like that's what they did earlier now they are moving the body to the other side all of these temples that you you can see around these all are shivalaya yeah it's shiva's temples what we see inside is the phallic structure shiva linga there is a culture in hinduism to what is uh, linga or uh, you may say uh, phallus you know male and female uh, uh, union yes uh, genetic geni- genitals union so Yes this is how the whole universe is created you know there has to be the male and female energy of course you know so uh, it might sound little bit you know weird you know worshiping um, you know sex organ but it is what it is you know like without it the universe nothing the life cannot be created there are 11 temples aligned in a very straight line um 
All of these temples were made in 18th century by a prime minister named Tonga Bahadur Rana and it is believed that he had constructed these temples in the name of his 11 wife. On the other side of the temple we can on the other side of the door we can actually see the engraves uh, written which states the name uh, of the queen for whom that particular temple is dedicated. Uh, but uh, it's not just only uh, a memorial foundation for the queen, it is actually the temple where people would come and pray and worship. It is, it is also a tell which is believed locally that there was uh, some problem uh, with fertility and he constructed this temple and after that he got uh, you know like away from his fertility issues so whoever is having some problems uh, of making children this is where they would come pray and believe and get children all right, all right. and also uh, you know to get rid from any sins one has committed back in those days the kings maharaja and all they used to construct the temples so during the process of uh, uh, concluding the power, Zanga Bahadur Rana, he killed many people. Uh, in the massacres that he created, he he also uh, knowingly, unknowingly, happened to kill many of his own relatives, his blood, the, you know, people belonging to the same clan as he is. And it's, it's a crime, you know, it's a sin according to Hindu's uh, belief. So he constructed all these temples so that he could be free from all these uh, sins. So when somebody constructs a temple, uh, it's not just constructed in a random place uh, where, uh, you know, there has to be a proper rituals to be made. They would ask for uh, the astrologers to, you know, find the right time, right place to build the temple. So all of these temples here are not just built just because they wanted to build, but they selected it in a way that uh, that particular place would uh, deliver waves of energies to the people. Mm. This is also one reason uh, some people say, like you said before, you felt a kind of energy mm. because this place has always been divine, and mm. the temples, the way it's been built, uh, mm. you know, the place why the place where it has been built, the time it has been has significant role mm. in you know like uh, mm -hmm. throwing out the energies. Mm. And uh, so these temples, uh, uh, these are the Nepali architectures, and by default, in any Hindu uh, Nepali temples. On the door, you will have uh, the carvings of this mythical creature. We call it Chepu. Okay, so Chepu, and uh, this is called uh, Hitimanga and Garuda. So these are the three siblings belongs to mythical bird family. Okay. On the way, we will see some holy men. There they are. Okay. Um, yes, so they have been living in this temple, taking baths. Uh, they take baths with the silver water in the morning. Uh, they do some morning rituals and mm -hmm. they're just having a sun bath mm -hmm. and they are pretty much famous among tourists, non-Hindus tourists because they do not mind being photographed mm -hmm. because uh, after being photo taken people offer some money you know, and that's how they run their life they have, in, in, uh, they have their own communities and whatever you offer to them they distribute some among uh, people like them so they've been living all their life around Pashupatinath temple to be free from samsara, the circle of life and death Mm. and they have their own rituals, principle of life. They never get married. They don't believe that, uh, uh, you know, enlightenment is possible if they are engaged in materialistic life, attachment, love, the veils of Maya and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they live around the temple, go sometime to the Himalayas or in the caves, be in complete seclusion away from the people so that they can 100% dedicate, uh, they can be 100% dedicated to the gods. The viewpoint to have the spectacular view of the temple and the old town Pashupatinath. The golden temple right in front of us is the Pashupatinath temple. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot go inside the temple at the moment because of COVID things. Um, yeah, so as long as we are here, it's not necessary we go to the temple. This place is so divine place. Every step that we take is already uh, a holy step and so the golden temple uh, which, which we can see at the moment uh, was constructed only in 18th century but the temple was first established in 5th century and when we talk about the statue of the temple you know it's pre-Vedic you know Vedic era is like a couple of thousand years and the statue that is inside the temple is before the Vedic era and uh, it was during the time of God that Lord Siva came here and stayed in the form of uh, a deer. There is a 
deer sanctuary. Um, this is where Lord Shiva was disguised deer. He came uh, and stayed here for a long time and when many god and goddesses came to find Lord Shiva, they could not find him anywhere. And finally Parvati, when she came here, she found Parvati, the wife of Shiva, she found a deer with the lights on its horn and she knew that it must be her husband that has taken the form of a deer. And she pleaded uh, to Shiva to go back, but Shiva was so, you know, like enjoying this place that he did not want to go away. But at the same time, the demons and devils were creating problems. So, um, Brahma, Vishnu, and Indra. Brahma, the god of creator, creation, the Vishnu, the god of protection, and Indra, the god of heaven, came to uh, take Shiva away, asked him to resume his uh, d divine power. but. Shiva was not, uh, you know, like uh, okay to go back. So, so when they caught uh, the deer, uh, Shiva happened to disappear, and what was left is the horn on the hands of those three gods. And then he asked uh, those three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Indra, to go to the three uh, different places: one uh, to the heaven, the other to the hell, and then another to the earth. So when they did it. Uh, Lord Shiva was hiding under the uh, earth and after many years according to the chronicles the first chronicles that is found in Nepali history the Gopal dynasty chronicles uh, there was uh, a special cow who used to come to the river um, every single day take baths and as soon as he used to take baths he used to uh, you know like go to one specific place and offer the milk at that time it was a jungle, you know, it was completely nature. And I'm talking about a thousand years legend. And as the legend goes, the cow was found giving the milk uh, exactly on the same spot every single day. And the cow herd was like, uh, what is so happening? What is wrong about this cow? You know, because the cow used to offer the milk at a spot, at the same spot, and the milk was vanished, it was disappeared. So he started digging the ground to find where the milk had been lost. And while digging the ground, you know, the flood of light came out hit his face and he was spotted and he instantly found moksha and then when they found uh, you know they started doing they started making prayers organizing ceremony because something very terrifying was happening a person just died they they they, they could see that a person was dying but the person was actually being free from the world because of the grace of lord shiva they directly attend nirvana and then so when they started digging more and more what they found was the Jyotrim Linga. Jyotrim Linga is the Shiva Linga with the lights. Okay, and then they started making wishes, praying it as the form of Lord Shiva, and all of their wishes was getting fulfilled. And then uh, the one who asked to be the king of Kathmandu, uh, he was given blessings by Lord Shiva, and then he became the king, and then he established uh, the statue and the temple. So this is a little bit of historical information about Pashupatinath, but but uh, hold on, you know, there are so many legends, so many myths about the temple. There is uh, sacred scriptures like Himbat Khanda, Nepal Mahatma, Shiva Puran and all, and all of these legends has its own story. So this is the one quite common.